Good afternoon, everyone, and, and thank you for your attention for the next 15 minutes. Um, hopefully, what I will share with you uh, about is Intellia's quest to transform our CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing technology platform into a real powerful product engine. And so um, what I'd like to do um, is first uh, share with you that we are a publicly traded company. So my lawyers have asked me to uh, mention that I will be making forward-looking statements. And the risks and uncertainties associated with the statements uh, can be uh, followed up on in our most recent 10K. And with that, that out of the way, what I'd really like to, to share with you are the four things that I would like to leave you with today. The first is that we at Intellia believe that genome editing has the opportunity and the possibility to really revolutionize medicine. We can go from treatments for rare genetic diseases to potentially cures for diseases, and we believe that Intellia is at the cutting edge of that revolution. Second, I'd like to share with you a, a little bit about our lipid nanoparticle delivery system that we believe offers very unique advantages for the application in genome editing. We believe that this is potentially one of the best-in-class uh, methods for getting the CRISPR-Cas9 components to the cell types that they're needed to get to. In addition, I'll be sharing some really interesting new hot-off-the-press data around our advancement toward the clinic with genome editing components. And finally, touch on applications both in vivo, which is where I'll spend most of the time today, but also highlight some of the activities we have ongoing in the ex vivo space as well. So as many of you are aware, CRISPR-Cas9 is a uh, genome editing platform. It is based on a bacterial nuclease, Cas9, which confer is given site specificity by an RNA-DNA interaction. And this RNA-DNA interaction can be used to drive permanent modifications of the DNA. So the nuclease cuts the DNA, creating a knockout to reduce the expression of a toxic protein. It can also be used to cut the DNA in ways to facilitate repair of point mutations or insert a new piece of DNA or a placement for a broken gene. Again, what the nuclease does is cut in a site-specific manner. And the eventual outcome is really driven by the biology of the DNA repair in the cell. These permanent modifications to the DNA is what Intellia is focusing on in the near term. However, we have research ongoing on using the site specificity of this nuclease to drive non-permanent changes to the DNA, either activation or inhibition of, in a site-specific manner. Won't go into this work today, but it is an area of active research. So we talked a little bit about that genome editing platform, CRISPR-Cas9, but you can have the best genome editor in the world, but if you can't get it to the cell type that you need to get it to, to change the phenotype, it's worthless as a therapeutic. And so what Intellia has focused on since its inception is novel delivery technologies to allow us to bring this genome editing platform to the cell types we need. And to this end, we've developed a proprietary lipid nanoparticle platform. We actually in-license these lipid nanoparticles from Novartis, and this library of LMPs is fully sub-licensable in the field of genome editing. And we believe these LMPs confer a number of advantages over existing delivery technologies, especially viral technologies, for genome editing. I think first and foremost is the fact that you're not constrained by the size of the cargo that you deliver with LNPs. So you can deliver the full-size SpyCats 9, as well as multiple guides and potentially repair templates. That's not true when you think about the size constraints you have for an AAV vector. In addition, the delivery with, CRISPR, with LMPs of the CRISPR-Cas9 components is transient. So you have transient expression of Cas9 which we think confers two advantages. One is, remember, Cas9 is a bacterial protein, so you don't want it hanging around your cell for fear of creating an immune response. In addition, 
there is a theoretical risk of increased off-targets with increased persistence of the nuclease in the cell. So LMP delivery of the CRISPR-Cas9 components allows it for transient expression, which we believe is an advantage. And from a product development standpoint, CRISPR-Cas9 mRNA uh, delivered by LMPs is a fully chemically synthesized process, which allows for a much more straightforward scale-up and manufacturing of large amounts. Again, we think this is an advantage as we think about developing products from this platform. As you'll see, uh, lipid nanoparticles have a natural affinity to the liver, and so that's where we focused our first in vivo programs. But there is the opportunity to target these LNPs to different organs, and this is a very active area of research for Intellia, finding ways to reach other organs beyond the liver with the LNPs, and something that we'd welcome discussions with potential partners on. So I've talked a little bit about the, the genome editing platform, as well as the development, uh, the delivery platform, and how are we bringing these two together towards a product. So we're looking for initial validation in a rare liver disease, transthyretin amyloidosis, or TTR amyloidosis. Uh, many of you may be familiar with, with this indication. Um, it results as an accumulation of a toxic protein that deposits on the heart and on the nerves, leading to neuropathy and heart failure. It affects about 50,000 patients worldwide. It, onset is during adulthood, and patients generally survive two to 15 years, depending upon the progression. The current standard of care for TTR amyloidosis is very poor, very limited. That, however, there have been some recent announcements of phase three data from Al Nilam suggesting there's a path forward for, for these patients with a, a new therapy. But again, this is a therapy and a treatment that will need to be, the patients will need to be on for the rest of their life. And what we're looking to do is to transform patients' lives with a potential cure. So how will we do that? Our approach is to knock out the TTR gene using CRISPR-Cas9 components delivered to the liver using lipid nanoparticles. And what's beneficial for us about this condition is that there's a circulating biomarker. So there are TTR levels in the plasma that we can measure to determine how successful we've been with the knockdown. So over the next few slides, I'm going to show you some preclinical data leading up to our march to the clinic. Now this data shows that with a single dose of CRISPR-Cas9 components delivered by lipid nanoparticles, we're getting a 97% knockdown of circulating TTR and a corresponding 70% editing rate of the TTR alleles in the whole liver. In addition, we're showing the transients of the expression. So the Cas9 mRNA and guide RNA are undetectable after 72 hours. So this is all well and good. We've, we've achieved high level of knockdown with a, a single dose, but you might ask, how does this persist? Is this, is this transient or is this a persistent effect? And so about a year ago, we set up to test that effect, that that same question. And what we have determined is that it is a persistent effect, so we have durability of TTR reduction as well as high levels of editing out to up to a year now in the mouse. So a single dose leads to low serum levels for TTR up to 12 months. And we believe that this is due to the fact that we may be editing uh, some stem cell-like cells in the liver. <coughs> And again, this is an area that we're looking to confirm. Now, as we think about developing a therapy, it's all well and good to, to cure a mouse of TTR, but we need to move to uh, higher order rodents as well as to non-human primates. Now, as I mentioned, the site specificity of the, the nuclease is conferred by an RNA-DNA interaction, and you'd assume that this dif there are sequence differences between the mouse and the rat non-human primates and humans. So as we go up in species, we have to identify new guide RNAs to, to drive the cutting. And so this is an experiment showing that we have achieved up to 91% reduction of serum TTR uh, and up to 66% editing in the liver uh, of rats. So we've demonstrated that the LNP CRISPR-Cas9 complex is tolerable and, and effective in both mice and rats. Next step is to take this to non-human primates. 
And in this case, we decided to do a two-step process. So first determine our ability to deliver mRNA to the non-human primate liver, and then assess editing. And so to that end, we formulated uh, GFP mRNA in our lipid nanoparticles and delivered it to non-human primates systemically. And what we're showing here is that there is GFP protein expression 24 hours after LMP delivery. So we are able to deliver cargo effectively with our LMPs to the non-human primate liver. We've now moved on to de delivering CRISPR-Cas9 components using the same technology, and those data are pending. So talked a bunch about the efficacy and our path to the clinic. We also need to really take a quick look at the safety. So there's been a lot of talk about off-target effects with CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing, and really want to show some data showing that the off-target effects are guide-dependent, and that it is possible using rigorous techniques to identify guides that have no detectable off-target effects. So we've taken this very seriously. We've put together a very complex and in-depth review of all of our guides to identify the best guides in silico with the lowest prediction for off-target effects, and then validating them both in uh, cell lines as well as in primary cells to really confirm that there are no off-target effects. So across multiple genes and multiple guides, we're seeing between 25 and 30 percent of of guides not having any off-target effects associated with them. That's not to say off-targets are not an issue because a full 20 to 25 percent have over five off-target effects when we're looking at them empirically, but there are guides that don't have off-target effects. And when we look at a single uh, gene with a number of guides to that gene, again, that's on the right side, you see that the orange dots represent the on-target effects, and the, and the black dots represent the off-target effects, and there are high-efficacy guides with no detectable off-targets. So that wraps up our in vivo uh, delivery of CRISPR-Cas9 for uh, liver disease. I did want to spend a few moments uh, talking about what we're doing in the ex vivo space. Again, this is where you take the cells out of the body, manipulate them using CRISPR-Cas9, and return them uh, to the body for the therapeutic effect. We do have an ongoing collaboration with Novartis in the field of CAR-Ts and hematopoietic stem cells. And we formed a wholly owned division of Intellia, which we call Extelia, to focus on the ex vivo applications of the platform. Extelia is focusing on non-CAR T oncology as well as autoimmune and inflammatory diseases. And to share a little bit of data in the ex vivo space, we've demonstrated that it is possible to do multiplex editing in T cells where the viability is not reduced and there's high editing efficiencies at all of the alleles. And we have achieved greater than 70 percent triple knockout in, um, in collaboration with our partners in the T primary T cell space. So how does all of this come together? What, what I told you about primarily, primarily today is our work in TTR amyloidosis, or ATTR. This work is partnered with Regeneron. Again, we're pursuing a knockout, and we are in NHP studies now. We expect to nominate a development candidate in early 2018 and progress to IND enabling studies in the first half of, of 2018. This is our first in vivo indication, and we fully expect additional in vivo indications to follow rapidly from this, including hepatitis B, which I didn't have a time to talk about today, but we are poised to enter animal studies in the back half of this year for knockout of the CCC DNA. We're also working on knockout and repair for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, as well as inborn errors of metabolism, the first one being primary hyperoxaluria, big mouthful. Uh, and those, again, are in guide design and evaluation, and again, can rapidly follow the success we have with TTR amyloidosis. In addition, we're working on ex vivo uh, programs uh, in hematopoietic stem cells, both independently and with our partner Novartis, and enabling uh, Novartis in CAR-T. 
And so in closing, I'd just like to thank you for your attention, and um, I'll be outside after the talk if there are any questions. Thanks. Thank you.